Former NFL player Ray Carruth breaking his silence, speaking out from behind bars, apologizing for his role in the 1999 murder. It was Tuesday, November 16th, 1999 in Charlotte, North Carolina. The 911 call came in shortly before 12.30 a.m. 911, you've been shot. You've been shot. Where are you at, I'm eight months pregnant. The operator asked the caller whether police, fire, or a medic were needed. How did this happen? The caller, a woman, responded with, Police, I've been shot. I've been shot. The police, fire, or medic. The police, I've been shot. Who was the person behind the call? Was the person really shot? Stay tuned. Caruth was born in Sacramento, California. His high school days were at Valley High School. He loved football and played it well. That was his golden ticket to the University of Colorado Boulder in the city of Boulder, Colorado. Tearing up the field for the Buffaloes, he wasn't just a player, he was the All-American sensation of 1996. Coy Detmer and Cordell Stewart dishing out passes for him at CU, and this guy wasn't just about the football games, he graduated with a double major in English, no less. During his remarkable four-season tenure, Carruth showcased his ability with 135 receptions, accumulating an impressive 2,540 yards and securing 11 touchdowns at an exceptional rate of 18.8 yards per catch. This outstanding performance didn't escape the notice of the NFL as Carruth emerged as a first-round pick, chosen 27th overall by the Carolina Panthers in the 1997 draft. The financial stakes were high, with Carruth sealing a lucrative deal amounting to $3.7 million and a noteworthy $1.3 million signing bonus. His rookie year, 1997, solidified Carruth's impact as he started 14 games with the iconic number 89. He stole the limelight with an impressive tally of 44 receptions, accumulating 545 yards and securing four touchdowns. It was a feat that placed him at the top among rookie receivers and earned him a well-deserved spot on the all-rookie team. Carruth's journey from college success to NFL stardom marked a significant chapter in his career with outstanding statistics and recognition at the highest level of professional football. Carruth had a wild ride during his college days in Colorado. His sophomore year kicked off with some unexpected events. His girlfriend Michelle Wright had a baby and things got accurate with child support talks. Michelle took Carruth to court and told him that they agreed on $2,700, half of what the judge ordered, all tied to Carruth stepping up his daddy duties. Fast forward to November 16th, 1999 in Charlotte, North Carolina, it got worse. Carruth's then girlfriend, Sharika Adams, gets shot four times by a guy named Van Brett Watkins Sr., who is in cahoots with Carruth. Sharika somehow manages to dial 911 and reports to them that Carruth's ride blocked hers and another car rolled up with a shooter. 911, you've been shot. You've been shot. Where are you at, man? I'm eight months pregnant. As for Carruth, he drove away from the scene. Sharika was eight months pregnant with Carruth's baby. She ends up in a coma, doctors do an emergency C-section, and the baby survives. Thinking he's got some get-out-of-jail card, Carruth posts a $3 million bail. But the deal was if either Sharika or the baby didn't make it, he'd turn himself in. Sadly, Sharika passed away on December 14, 1999. The baby, Chancellor Lee Adams, pulled through but with some tough breaks, permanent brain damage and cerebral palsy from a 70-minute oxygen shortage before being born. Then, in 2021, Chancellor Lee will graduate high school at 21. After Sharika Adams' tragic end, Carruth pulled a Houdini but got caught on December 15th in West Tennessee, chilling in a car trunk outside a motel. And guess what they found in the trunk with him? $3,900 cash, his pee bottles, spare clothes, candy bars, and a phone. Panthers gave him the boot on December 16th, waiving the morals clause in his contract, and the NFL slapped an indefinite suspension on him on December 17th. The whole Carruth event sent shockwaves in Panthers history. Frank Garcia, who shared the field with Carruth for over two seasons, spoke out. When news broke out about Carruth's potential link to a murder just 20 miles from the team's downtown hotspot in South Charlotte, players were shaken. Garcia paints the scene like finding out your cubicle neighbor gets arrested for murder at work. You just don't always know people as well as you think you do, he said. Carruth, a bit of a quiet dude, mainly kept to himself. It's funny how he had a soft spot for kids, even reading books to elementary school students. Now, imagine Panthers players dragged out of practice to speak at the trial and the rest glued to the players' lounge watching the courtroom drama on court TV. Garcia said, There's one time you were hiding from the cameras. You just wanted to stay low and not be involved. You're asking yourself, did I miss any signs? 
How is somebody capable of this? Now, in the courtroom, they said Carruth paid Watkins and crew to murder Adams because she wouldn't go for the abortion of their baby. Carruth's lawyer declined that it happened because a drug deal went south, claiming Watkins shot Adams in a fit of rage after she flipped him off for asking about Carruth. Sharika's 911 call was played. Sharika identified Carruth all over the place, to the dispatcher, the cops on the scene, and even at the hospital. The prosecution said that Ruth hired Watkins and Kennedy to kill Adams, all because he didn't want to bear child support for her kid on top of the 3000 he was already paying for a California love child. The defense said it was a blatant lie. Since Carruth makes $650,000 a year, why would he risk losing his career for a child support pay so little? Kennedy, facing his capital murder trial, spoke out eventually. He said that Carruth paid him to kill Adams, and even another of his exes testified that Carruth confessed to her that he was involved in the shooting. Afterwards, a prison officer, Sergeant Shirley Riddle, said that Watkins confessed to her. His story was that he lost it when Sharika flipped him off, and it was all about a drug deal gone south. Carruth doesn't step into the witness box. Then they called another ex, Amber Turner, who spoke about Carruth threatening her life and her having an abortion. So, after 11 weeks of courtroom theatrics and 70 witnesses, they finally concluded on January 15, 2001. The prosecution increased speculations, playing that 911 tape again and highlighting several phone calls between Carruth and Watkins in the weeks leading up to the big showdown. For the defense, David Rudolph pulls out his top 10 arguments all aimed at creating doubt about the whole prosecution story. Two days later, after a solid 11 hours of debate, they split all four charges. Judge Lamb gives them a pep talk and tells them to keep at it, and finally, on Friday, January 19th, the verdict drops. Carruth dodged the first-degree murder charge but was found guilty on the other three. His sentence was not less than 18 years and 11 months, and not more than 24 years and 4 months behind bars. And in the lineup of sentences, Watkins grabs 40 years plus charge, Kennedy owns up to second degree murder with a minimum of 11 years and 8 months, and Abraham, well, pleads guilty to some lesser charges and gets probation. Then, Carruth wrote a letter to Sherika's mom in 2018, Sandra Adams, to apologize to her for accusing her of lying in interviews. In the letter, he said, I'm apologizing for the loss of her daughter. Carruth said, I'm apologizing for the impairment of my son. I feel responsible for everything that happened, he said, and I just want her to know that truly I am sorry for everything. If I did it in the open, it would end the lies if I say publicly, Miss, I apologize. Miss Adams, I take responsibility for what happened that she can no longer get on television and do an interview and say Ray has never apologized to me, Carruth said. If I could change anything, I'd change the whole situation. His mother would still be here and I wouldn't be where I'm at. So that's what I'd want to change. I want the incident to never have happened at all, he said. In an open letter to Sandra Adams, which was addressed to her and sent to WBTV, Carruth said, I should be raising my son. His mother should be raising her son. Miss Adams should not be doing this, and I want that responsibility back, he said. I feel like he might not ever have his mother in his life, but he could still have me, and I could still make a difference, and I don't think that's anyone's responsibility when I'm still here. Embracing the role of a social pariah, Carruth reflects on his connection with Adams in a letter, disregarding the notion that he planned her murder due to her refusal of an abortion. He clarifies their relationship, stating it was casual with only a few encounters. Carruth acknowledges bringing up abortion, but asserts he respects Adam's decision to keep the child. Expressing gratitude in the letter, he thanks Sandra for her unconditional care, compassion, love, and support to the Chancellor. Carruth was released on October 22, 2018, after 18 years, and moved from North Carolina to Pennsylvania. Locked up, Carruth swapped the football field for a barber's chair, pulling in $1 per hour. Yeah, it's a far cry from the millions he could have bagged with that Panthers contract he signed back in the day. After the release, he's taken away to an undisclosed spot, and a nine-month post-release program awaits him, according to Jerry Higgins. For those nine months, he's not free. He'll need a case officer to agree before he can get out of the state or country, but after those nine months, he can go wherever he wants to. Recently, Sandra Adams, whose daughter Sharika Adams fell victim to one of Charlotte's most horrifying crimes in 1999, 
found herself complete with unexpected emotions. Van Brett Watkins, the hitman who confessed to shooting Sharika Adams four times during the trial of former Carolina Panther Ray Carruth, passed away on December 3rd in a North Carolina prison at the age of 63 due to natural causes. Adams learned about Watkins' demise six days after it occurred. Since then, she's been navigating a complex array of emotions toward her daughter's assailant, as revealed in a phone interview. Anger and shock were expected emotions, but there was an unexpected addition to Sandra Adams' emotional mix. Sadness, not just for herself, but for Van Brett Watkins and his family. I really had a reaction that I didn't plan, Adams shared. I was really sad. I mean, I was visibly upset. Surprisingly, Watkins and Adams had maintained occasional correspondence by letter over the past two decades. Watkins penned nearly a dozen letters from prison, and Adams revealed that she responded about half the time. Multiple times, Watkins would include $10 or $20 in his letters, urging her to spend it on her grandson. Adams consistently told Watkins that she had forgiven him for the crime, emphasizing its necessity for her mental well-being. I do feel like Watkins was genuinely and sincerely remorseful for what he did, stated Adams, who has been caring for her grandson, Chancellor Lee, since his premature birth on the day of the 1999 shooting. Chancellor and I believe in heaven and hell, and I don't want Watkins to go to hell and be forever doomed. We're praying that he has his soul right with God. Watkins consistently said that Carruth, the father of Sharika Adams' unborn child, had planned a murder-for-hire hit in 1999 due to his reluctance to pay child support. Court revelations disclosed Carruth's existing child support commitment for another child, amounting to $3,000 monthly. Carruth, the Panthers' top draft pick 1997 from the University of Colorado, has consistently refuted this narrative. However, a Charlotte jury found it plausible enough to land Carruth nearly 18 years in prison, convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. In comparison, Watkins, the confessed triggerman in the drive-by ambush of Sharika Adams on Red Road in South Charlotte on November 16, 1999, faced a harsher sentence. Before he died in prison, he wasn't slated for release until 2045. I once visited Watkins in prison in 2018, engaging in a surreal three-hour interview through two panes of bulletproof glass. During our conversation, Watkins expressed a desire for Carruth's demise and claimed responsibility for four other murders preceding Sharika Adams in different states, asserting he had escaped repercussions for those crimes. That's the bitch I was referring to who got me into this. Oh. Okay. Watkins also corresponded through letters, sending around 15 of them over the years. These letters often contained requests for money, which were left unanswered. They repeated apologies for his role in the death of Sharika Adams and the injury to her child, Chancellor Lee Adams. Chancellor Lee Adams, born prematurely with cerebral palsy and other disabilities due to oxygen deprivation during his birth, survived despite his mother being shot four times by Watkins. Chancellor Lee graduated from high school in Charlotte and is now 24. Sandra Adams, his guardian, finds significance in the fact that Watkins passed away 24 years after the crime, considering Sharika Adams was also 24 when she was killed. In his final letter, Watkins pleaded with Sandra Adams to visit him in the Raleigh prison. I prayed about it, Sandra Adams shared. And I said to myself, you know, I don't think I need to visit him because I have forgiven him. And I don't want to open up this whole box of questions I have because none of the questions I could ask him would bring Sharika back. So I decided against it. Sandra Adams has consistently maintained that Carruth, approaching his 50th birthday in January, carries the primary responsibility for her daughter's death. This belief is rooted in Carruth's conviction for orchestrating the murderous plot, a contrast to Watkins, who had stalked Sharika Adams for several months before committing the crime. Watkins was just paid to do a job, Adams emphasized. He just wanted some money, and he didn't care who he was killing, you know. He didn't have a personal relationship with Sharika. If there's anyone I blame for Sharika's death, it's Ray. He had a personal relationship with her and conspired to plan this whole thing. In his defense, Carruth consistently asserted that Watkins took revenge for Carruth backing out of a potential drug deal. This strategy, often referred to as the drug deal gone bad defense, failed to convince the jury, leading to Carruth's imprisonment for nearly 20 years. Despite maintaining his innocence regarding Adam's murder, Carruth's release from prison in 2018 saw him relocating to Pennsylvania, and there are indications he may have returned to his home state of California. During a visit to Central Prison in Raleigh in 2018, I met with Watkins for a three-hour interview. This process took over six months to arrange due to Watkins' intermittent solitary confinement. Upon entering the prison's visiting room, Watkins, then 58, moved slowly with a cane, looking far older than his age. Throughout our conversation, conducted through a pane of glass with a metal grate, 
Watkins expressed his deep-seated resentment toward Carruth, whom he blamed for his incarceration. Watkins voiced an unforgiving stance toward Carruth, stating clearly, I won't forgive Ray Carruth. I want him dead. I say I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it because he made me do it. Okay, he made the other two also do it. Okay, that's your client. He harbored anger about Carruth's impending release, contemplating ways to inflict harm on Carruth during his final months in prison. In a shocking revelation, Watkins admitted to four additional murders during the interview, but refused to provide details or assist authorities in solving those crimes, asserting that his victims deserved their fate. Sarah said the interview left her in bewilderment, filled with the uncertainty of the truth behind Watkins' words. Speaking of the Adams family during our interview, Watkins exhibited a gentle tone. He disclosed having preserved one of the letters Sandra Adams had sent him for 15 years, emphasizing that her forgiveness was among the most significant events in his life. Contrary to Carruth, Watkins maintained more extensive contact with Sandra Adams through these letters, even after Carruth's release. In his final letter to Sandra Adams in early 2023, Watkins talked about his health issues. Adams shared, he did tell me that he got to where he could barely walk. The later letters became more personal, revealing details about his background. Watkins confided that he hailed from a family of law enforcement officers, casting himself as the black sheep. He aimed to convey to his family that he had undergone positive changes, expressing remorse for his actions. Sandra Adams shared the news of Watkins' passing with Chancellor Lee on Saturday night. Considering Chancellor Lee's limited understanding due to his disabilities, she used their nickname Mommy Angel for Sharika to explain the situation. Adams recounted, Chancellor could see I was visibly upset. So I told him that the man that killed Mommy Angel had died in prison. I explained that the man was getting old, not doing well, and that he had asked me to forgive him, which I did. However, I expressed my hope that he had also sought forgiveness from God. Before concluding our conversation about her daughter's killer's death, Sandra Adams had one final request. She said, If you find the address of the Watkins family, could you give it to me? I'd love to send them a card. What are your thoughts on this story? Let us know in the comment section. Remember to subscribe to our channel if you found this content valuable. We'll see you in the next one.